Good evening and welcome to BBC London News. I'm Sonia Jessup. First tonight, the growing frustration among volunteers trying to help victims of the Grenfell Tower fire in North Kensington, claiming there's a lack of leadership and coordination from the government and council. The borough's town hall was boarded up following last night's protests, leaving many Londoners angry. Sarah Harris reports. Definitely not open for business. The main doors and windows at Kensington Town Hall were boarded up. This left many volunteers who said they'd been told to come here confused about what they should do next. And we were told to, cut, to come here. Amanda Baxter had two van loads of clothes and supplies which had been carefully sorted. She says she'd arranged to meet a relief coordinator here but could only talk to a security guard through tinted windows. I'm bewildered. I'm absolutely shocked, if I'm honest. I'm like, what? Why? There's people suffering. These people and the, the, the victims, the real victims. And there's nobody here to stand here and say, right, yes, you need to take that there or you need to take that there. There's nobody and it's just, it's horror, really. These were the angry scenes last night as protesters demanded answers at the town hall. Today, it's quiet apart from volunteers who say they just want to help. I've got people coming up to me giving me bags of stuff and they're saying look on the website, look on the website, this is not good enough, do you know what I mean? They're the people that are in charge to deal with this situation and they're saying we'll take control and we'll dish it out to all the local authorities and the local day centres and now they won't accept my donation, so this is just not good enough. It's a similar story of chaos at relief centres near Paddington where people are crying out for a plan of action. I would like some officials to come down to take, give some direction, to organise some storage, organise vans, not rely on people's generosity, get the government officials involved. There's, no, there's absolutely nobody around. From many of those volunteering, the message is clear. Hello! Can we get some attention, please? Sarah Harris, BBC London News. And Sarah joins me now. What has the council had to say to this? Well, there is a note on the council's website saying the reason that the town hall was closed last night was because of the damage done by protesters. But we have asked for an interview both yesterday and today, and they've declined. And I think there is a feeling that perhaps in these sensitive times, it might be better to say nothing than to say something that could make the situation worse. Whether that strategy is working, given that people are crying out for leadership, is another question. OK, Sarah, thank you. Of course, it's also been a difficult time for many of the neighbours of Grenfell Tower. They were forced to leave their homes on Wednesday. They've now returned, but as Caroline Davis reports, many are deeply distressed as they try to carry on in the shadow of the burned-out tower block. Three days ago, Kismet could only watch. Evacuated from his nearby flat with his family, he's now been allowed back home. But he didn't sleep much last night as protests came through the streets. He's worried about his children. I saw them like, this, like staying, like thinking in something, looking something, worrying about some things. Among the many problems in Kismet's flat, he says the fire alarms haven't been working for five years. Yesterday, someone came round. The fire alarm has been changed yesterday and they come quick and said, if you need anything, we can do it, we can do it. But it's no, it's too late. Viviana and David live in the same block. They say they still don't know their safety routes. I mean, my, my, my office, they have fire assemblies and drills for when a fire happens. I've never had anything like that here or anyone tell me where I'm supposed to go if there's a fire. Some of the people I was speaking to inside today didn't want to appear on camera, but said they did want the message to get across, that they want an apology. They want someone to take responsibility for what happened at Grenfell. They feel that at the moment they can't even trust their homes, let alone the authorities. Both families are now back living at the foot of the tower. The worst is last night we were sitting at the dining table and you used to see the lights from the tower and it's a black hole. You see nothing. They are home but it will never be the same. Caroline Davis, BBC London News. Well, let's take a quick look now at the weather. More sunshine tomorrow, so very high UV levels. It will be even hotter too, highs of 31 Celsius. And that's it from us. We will be back tomorrow night at 6.45 here on BBC One. We will, of course, have all the latest on the Grenfell Tower fire. Bye-bye. <laughs>